What's up guys, Jay, Morning After Kill, and if you've been following along the last past few videos, we've been discussing whether or not the Embracer Group's purchase of Gearbox is to blame for the continual downfall of the Borderlands franchise. With newer fans of the series giving Gearbox some leeway on their recent mistakes, and bootstrapping the blame square onto the shoulders of the Embracer group. Unaware that they're just the most recent crop of consumers to fall into the Borderlands trap. <laughs> Welcome to the hole, guys! There's no getting out. <laughs> it's... It's funny that we're talking about this because last week was the anniversary of the pre-sequels release. October 14th, 2014. And it, it's, it's hard to believe, but Gearbox's little bastard child of the series is damn near 10 years old. And if you didn't play this game at launch, or you came into the series with Borderlands 3 and you're going back through the older games with the Pandora's box collection, you wouldn't be incorrect in saying that the pre-sequel is an underrated entry into the series and left scratching your head. Why didn't this catch on more with the community? I mean, it, it has arguably some of the best skill trees and characters in the series. The story is easily the best in the mainline franchise. And the Claptastic Voyage is considered to be one of the best Borderlands DLCs released of all time. Which would have some... Beg the question, coming off the heels of Borderlands 2's massive success, why did the pre-sequel fail? And if you want the answer to that question, it's going to depend upon who you ask. Say you were to ask Randy Pitchford, who was the blame for the pre-sequel's failure? He'd say, It's those damn content creators! That damn Sasquatch! <laughs> However, if you were to ask any normal non-USB flash drive filled with porn carrying person, they'd point to the multiple times in a row that Gearbox and 2K would continually shoot themselves in the foot with every executive decision made with the pre-sequel. He's just mad that the content creators held them accountable for their actions. Or, in this case, lack of action. Their first misstep with the pre-sequel came Months before the game even released. When the first trailer dropped and next generation platforms were nowhere to be seen. And we tried. Oh, we tried to warn Gearbox that the switch over to next generation was happening faster than before. And instead of utilizing the content creators and their closeness to the community in seeing this switchover happen faster than it's ever happened in console history, that they would use that information and possibly make the game available on next generation hardware. But Gearbox not only responded, but they doubled down by saying that the pre-sequel was created for platforms that their customers 
are already familiar with. There is no next-gen version of the pre-sequel. Ignoring the fact that the first year of PS4 and Xbox One software was very limited, and the possibility of picking up all new customers for the franchise was at an all-time high. Now, Gearbox's next mistake was launching the pre-sequel filled with game-breaking bugs, glitches, mission hardlocks that would make it impossible to progress any further in the story on that character, and to top it all off, many bosses didn't respawn after you killed them during the campaign making it impossible to farm for loot outside of killing iwajira over and over for grinder fodder which would end up getting nerfed along with some of the better performing weapons all before Gearbox would address any of the bugs, glitches, or targeted loot farming. God damn, this is this is sounding real fucking familiar, isn't it, guys? <laughs> and Randy's response after months of community outcry was if you're a farmable boss type of guy. You're going to have to be patient or just move on. Ouch. After months of silence from Gearbox regarding these game-breaking glitches, bugs, and no farmable mini-bosses, while releasing multiple nerfs in the meantime, Gearbox would go on to lump playable characters and a slapped together Hollow Dome DLC in the season pass in a low effort to fulfill their obligations to pay in season pass customers. Customers who bought into the season pass expecting four campaign DLCs like we were used to. Customers who asked the CEO many and plenty of times to fix the game before releasing DLCs and nerfs. And customers who were told in response to move on. More importantly, told to move on the weekend that the Dark Below's Crota's End Raid released. Essentially, spoon-feeding the last remaining players of the pre-sequel directly into the hands of Bungie and their new looter shooter, which was available on last and newer generation hardware, Destiny. And many fans who were so jaded, would never return to the Borderlands series ever again, as indicated by the 10 million less sales that Borderlands 3 has done compared to Borderlands 2. <laughs> so, if you ask Randy Pitchford, it's our fault. It's our fault that we weren't happy with what they gave us. However, the rest of us know better. So, my name is Jay, more than after kill. I wanna thank you guys for watching. Make sure you guys rate, comment, subscribe. If you leave a thumb up on a video, I'd highly appreciate it because it gives me motivation to make more videos for y'all motherfuckers that watch my motherfucking videos. It's funny that this entire cycle repeated itself with Borderlands 3 and Wonderland where Gearbox would once again find themselves coming off a Borderlands game that sold incredibly well with Borderlands 3, 
and then try to piggyback a cash grab off of its coattails. And every time Gearbox does this, the Borderlands community gets smaller and smaller with each and every release. Making you wonder just how many times can Gearbox piss away their goodwill before there just really isn't any left in the community. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section down below. My name's Jay, more than Afterkill. Thanks for watching, and I'm gonna see y'all motherfuckers later. Oh shit, guys! I forgot to farm oxygen! Gearbox. <laughs> they made you farm oxygen before they allowed you to farm mini bosses in the pre sequel.